Yo, welcome guys to the sixth video in the series where I will show you how to defeat all the dungeons in Throne of Liberty. And today we're going to take a look at Tyrant's Isle. This dungeon is mainly farmed from staff players, because here we're having the Tuplex Thunderous Soul with really decent stats, as well as bow players. This is for most the starting weapon of choice. And then you also have those bracers that help a lot resolving your mana issues early on and are decent for PvP with the dexterity and range evasion. Special about this dungeon are mini quests that you can see in the top right corner below your minimap. Those quests always need to be completed to advance to the next zone. To do this the fastest, in the first area, you will kill the first two mobs while kiting, skip the next two and then engage on the reptilian butcher. You can use the flowers for light if needed. Once he is dead, you will kill the last two reptilians if they didn't echo you during a boss fight. You will do this kiting towards the gate of the minimap that does not have a lock on it. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion is needed. Currently, 91.2% of the people watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel. So let's make a deal. If you learn something new in this video, you have to subscribe. Now in the second cave you want to kill exactly 6 reptilians on your pathway and ignore the rest. The reptilians sometimes spawn little ads, you can ignore those and just run away. The next mini boss has usually 2 reptilians standing by it that you aggro anyway, so here you get your 8 out of 8 quest completion. And you can kill the mini boss to advance. In case the mini boss is doing AOE layers, just jump over it. In the third area you will have to rescue 2 sailors. Best option is to send dagger players out there to open decent stealth while the rest rushes to the bloodthirsty reptilian gladiator. This boss can be easily kited and meanwhile you can AOE down the reptilians for your quest. Once he is dead, a geyser will unlock and you are kiting the last mobs towards it. In the geyser itself, you will have to position yourself closest facing the giant wooden barricade. When the geyser erupts, you will have to morph at the highest location, look all the way upwards by flying towards the barricade. You will elevate once with spacebar and then you can fly over. You skip the mobs here and continue through the cave into another geyser where you can then follow the path to unlock the last resurrection point. This also means only one person has to complete this step, the others can just die once the rest point is unlocked and they get ported to their friend. Congratulations, you've made it to the boss. The fight here starts with two fury attacks that you have to block and he also has an AOE attack where he throws a bomb on the floor and from the hit location a fire stream erupts in the form of a cross. His next mechanic is a heavy AoE blow that you can only dodge by standing on one of the geysers that are starting to boil. If you're not morphing in the air, you will receive fall damage, so best way to get back to DPS is morph but then insta-hawk attack downward. His final mechanic is the hardest to play around. He will do some magic that summons you towards him and cursing you into a red body. You will now have to run as fast as possible towards one of the blue flowers, but don't touch it yet. On your skill bar, you now have a skill that allows your red to bury into the earth. You will use this skill to dodge his one-shot mechanic. Then you unbury and touch the flower and you can go straight back to dealing DPS. Easy kill and now you can loot his chest with 300 dimensional contract tokens. Yeah guys that was it with the video. If you still have any more questions let me know in the comments. As always I would answer everything in less than 24 hours. Cheers guys.